This game week, really excited about um, this week's opponent, Ohio. Have a lot of respect for Frank Solis. You look at this team, it's been a four straight bowl games. Uh, last season, having a, over a 1,600 yard rush here, though. Lincolnship, the quarterback, uh, Tyler Tillington, threw for over 18 touchdowns and 2,800 yards. Eight starters return on offense, six on defense. And you look at a team that last year, first game, went into Happy Valley, beat Penn State. So our work is cut out for us. But it's key for us this week is just the mental approach and just our preparation and our focus is going to be key to making sure that as we prepare this week that the players understand that the opponent and their respect the opponent that they're going to play. <coughs> How important is that win over Penn State, no matter who's coming back? But for you to point out to your players, that kind of gets their attention, doesn't it? When you oh, say it they beat Penn attention. State. It does. It gets their attention. And, and if you look at uh, them going into Happy Valley beat Penn State, and Penn State was up, and then they were able to come back and then win that game late. You said that you think the next step is being consistent week to week, so more of the Florida, and I think, more of the Florida performance, less of the UConn. Syracuse. That has to start practice. Do you see that? Is there a difference in practice early on that you can tell from last year that you think you might get that consistency with you? Well, what has happened is you have an older football team now. You have a much more mature, mature football team. And so now the consistency and guys understand just a level of play. They know how to go out and practice. You know, I was just thinking about just uh, three weeks of camp. Maybe one time I would have started practice over again if I had to just go back. Cause, but each day they came out, you know, some one morning I put the ball on the goal line. We, we didn't even stretch. I just blew the whistle and just sat it down and said, let's go play. But the guys responded. And, and, and guys that complained, they just knew that, you know, each day they come out to practice, it's all about it's just getting better. What do you like about your team so far? And what are the things that they need to grow on? Well, I just like the overall attitude right now. And I, I just like the way it's shaping up just with the leadership on the team. And you're looking at a team now that has uh, it's been together now with, uh, with four to the senior class that we have is a class that we brought in. And I think with the fifth year guys, maybe we have five or six, but they, they understand now what it's all about. And they understand with the uh, continuity with the coaching staff, they understand how to go to work. And, and guys, they expect, you know, the guys said, you know what's amazing now, coaches, when we go to practice, you kind of expect what's going to happen in practice. Whereas before, we kind of just wondered what was going to go on. Is this the best focused team that you've had coming out of camp, or most focused team? I, I would say it probably is a, the most focused, because it's a much older team also. But if you look at, uh, at the quarterback position, you have a much more mature quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. But he has a lot of players surrounding him on offense. You know, you look at Jake Smith, who's been a starter. You look at Miller, who's been a starter. Jamal Brown's been a starter. In the wide receiver position with Colton coming back with Devontae Parker and it's with Sonoris and uh, with uh, Dominique Brown. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you, you look up front with Brandon Dunn, with Roy Pylon, with uh, Marcus Smith, you know, Malden, all four of those guys are returning starters and with Preston Brown being the guy in the middle, with Akeem and Pryor being the guys that also at the safety position. So you have a, a team that, that really understands and they go about their business the right way now. They know how to work. I'm how much of that was from last year with, with the Sugar Bowl? I mean, how much of, of that was a follow-up from the Sugar Bowl win? You see that they come in mm -hmm. a lot more focused for practice, and that seemed to have played out during camp. But I think winning the Sugar Bowl was good for them, but they also understand also that they really have to really work now because now the, the level of expectation has risen. And they, and they want to know that they want to set the standard for the program, and they want to know how to manage. They want to understand how to manage those expectations. Going in week one, do you have an idea of how those carries will be split for the running back position? No, I, I have no idea how we're going to split those carries because you have a Sonoris, you have Don Lee, you have uh, a Dyer, uh, you, you have three backs right there that we're going to try to give a chance. We want to play all three of them, even with Corbin fig figured in the mix. So you have four running backs, so no idea yet how we're going to play and then how those guys are going to get those carries. Mm -hmm. But it's only one football, so you want to throw that ball too. So we're, we're just going to have to just manage that. How are your running backs different? I mean, each, each has his own unique style. Would you talk about down even? Well, when you look at Sonoris, he, he's an outside runner, speed guy, and uh, a lot of speed and quickness. You look at Dominique Brown's a power runner. Uh, Dominique can uh, can run between the tackles for you. And then Dyer, and he's, he's really exceptional because he can do both. He has the speed and he has the power. And Corbin's a speed player. He's a speed runner. He's an outside runner. So everyone will have their own unique abilities and we're going to try to use it to the best.
I mean, you don't want to like, or, or do you plan on keeping the balance of the three or do you like to see one emerge like that? Well, eventually, you'd like to see one emerge, and then that way they're going to be supposed to the carries. We haven't had, uh, what, a thousand yard rusher since Belial, but uh, you'd you like to see one guy emerge. But if that doesn't happen, then if you have your, a good, that's a good problem to have, I guess, right now, have all the running backs. Which starting spots are still up for grabs? Uh, there's no starting spots up for grabs. So we kind of know who we're going to start with and how we're going to go into the season. Is Dyer, was he in like football shape when you got him or did you have to, you know, he'd been working out in that year off, but what did you have to do to kind of get him to where you needed him to be physically? Uh, he wasn't in football shape. And uh, I think that um, just him getting into a routine because he had been out a year. And then you think about it, when he got here in August, it was the first time that he had, had really got back into just the, the routine of, of being a football player. <coughs> uh, it, it didn't take him very long because he had taken care of his body. And, and he had worked, ran it. And worked out where we're in Little Rock, so he he came into the program. So he, it took him like a, you know a week or so to kind of get just get used to our tempo and how we go about things. And but he, he's done a really good job with it, just getting uh, used to it. Are you encouraged that your defense can play at a higher level this year? I I would like to see our defense play at a higher level. I'd like to see them play better than what we played last year with the number of starters coming back. I, I think that that could be achieved, but. You know what you got to find on defense right now is just you, you, we have to dominate up front, and with the starters coming back with with Clyde with Brandon Dunn, with Marcus, with, with Malden outside, and then with your backers. Because if you look at what we're pressing at Burgess, there's two backers and Durant, so your front seven's back. So you like to say, man, what's going to be good for us on defense? If we got to stop the run, I think last season. We had with seven, eight hundred, seven, eight mm -hmm. running backs that rushed for over hundred yards. What keeps you up at night? What are the things that worry you, especially in opening week? Uh, just the whole team. You know, you, you always want to put a football team out there that's very disciplined. You want to put a football team out there that, that's exciting to watch, and that kind of that's your concern because when you take the field, you kind of wonder, hey, how we're going to play, what we're going to really look like. Coach, how the things are you? Oh, they they do a really good job with their scheme on offense and running that football. Because you look at the running back last year, like I said, we had over 1,600 yards. And the quarterback's an issue because he can run and throw. So that's a major concern. He's a more physical runner, it seems. Is that a point of emphasis for your linebackers to get him to the ground? Well, he's not, you know, he's not one of those. Usually when you see a quarterback in that position, like you think of like Cam and Tebow, he's not of that stature at all. He's, he's a little smaller than those guys. But the, the back is more of a power runner. Yeah, the back it, yes. in particular. Is, is that a focus this week about how to – Properly tackle that, that Well, you have to tackle. It's, it's only one way. You, you have to tackle and get it down. So you used last year, I think you switched towards the end of the year, put more starters on the kickoff coverage and kickoff return. Will you continue to do that this year, or do you have some guys that you work in that aren't starters in that position? What we have now in our kicking game is four guys. And, and what I did is I, I sat down with Coach Carter and I said, you know, we, we have a group of guys on our team that have to become a kicking game guys. These are this, this, this is your guys, and this is a pool you're going to pull from. And I think we sell, I think it's for anyone from 18 to 25 guys. And so those guys, you'll see those guys on every kicking game, you know, like a Gerard Hallman is going to be on every kicking game. You know, I just got to sit there trying to think of some of the guys. But we have a support group. But on the punt team, we don't put a defensive stars on the punt team because it's a critical. We got to protect the punter and don't let the punt get blocked. And on kickoff team, that's the first play of defense. We got to see the defensive guys, and most of them are defensive guys that are running out the field and tackling the ball. Are you pleased with what you've seen, and did you change things schematically? Uh, we changed up some things. Uh, just with our scheme, we, we had to change it because we just weren't very good. But uh, we've been, been, uh, been very pleased with what we've been doing in the uh, with carrying the ball count. Coach, have you been able to develop any uh, depth on the offensive line? You know, right now with our offensive line, uh, you know, with, with Garcia and Mack, so you, what you have, have ended up doing, you know, Cameron Joyer is out, and Acosta done, has done an unbelievable job of, of going in and replacing them right now. So what we try to do is just find eight linemen, anywhere from seven to eight linemen that, can, that we can move around. And if something does happen, at least you can plug a guy in and you feel comfortable where that guy can go play both positions. It's like Jamal can play right tackle or left tackle. Garcia can play right or left. And then with your guard position, like Jake is at center, but if something happens at a guard position, you know, we're not afraid to move someone to the center position and put Jake back at the guard position. So we can interchange any way we want to up front. 
you know, true freshman and backup left tackle, Cam Frazier, what has he done to impress you? Uh, Cam is, is still developing and, and still growing and still learning, but he's done a good job here in the offseason. So it's still, it's still a lot of work for him to do.